Here's a question I get asked quite regularly, especially by students looking to make decisions about which senior math courses they should select while considering their career path, mathematical interests, and skill level. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is providing you with a quick crash course on what calculus is. Now, fair warning, calculus is a pretty advanced math concept, so there is more to it than I can provide in a brief three to five minute video tutorial. So stay tuned for more calculus videos that will further develop your understanding of this topic. So calculus can be broken up into two subtopics differential calculus and integral calculus. Differential calculus is what is taught mostly at the secondary school level, and integral calculus is usually not introduced until the first year of post-secondary school. Now there's exceptions to this, but this is generally the trend. So if you're considering studying mathematics at the post-secondary school level, it would be very beneficial to have a pretty good working understanding of integral calculus, but that's not the point of this video. So we're gonna be focusing solely on differential calculus. So all of differential calculus centers around this question. How can we find the slope of a line using only one point? In most cases, you were taught that in grade nine, you need two points to find the slope of a line. In fact, you may even recall this famous formula for slope of a line, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This formula by definition requires the use of two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So how can we possibly find the slope of a line with only one point? Enter calculus. So picture that I have a function, a uh, nice little curve here, and I have two points on the function. The first point, A, is h units away from the second point, B. Now I know this notation can be a little bit confusing, so feel free to pause the video and digest this a bit. But what this says is that this point is at x plus h, which means it's h units away from this point. Uh, and this y value here, f at x plus h, just means if I sub in that x plus h value, I get the y value that corresponds to it. So take a second to process that. So this blue line is what's referred to as a secant line, and it's very easy to find the slope of a secant line using the slope formula. We have two points, we sub in y2, y1, and divide by x2 minus x1. However, this is not calculus. What I can do is I can make the distance between these two points very, 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 very small. So if I decrease the value of h and I move my secant line accordingly, I'm just gonna pick up this point and drag it along the curve. You can see I'm making the distance between these two points very, very close to zero. And as I do that, and this value of h gets closer and closer to zero, this secant line approaches what's called a tangent line, which is a line touching the function at one point. So as the value of h gets closer to zero, we get a better and better approximation for what the tangent line would look like, and I'm able to get a better and better approximation for the slope of that tangent line. Remember, this was the fundamental question we were hoping to answer. So I can use the slope formula with the values of x plus h and f at x plus h to find the expression for the slope of this tangent line. Essentially, that's calculus. A large part of it is finding expressions that will predict the slope of a tangent line at any point on a given function. That's what's called derivatives. And man, I could go on all day about these things, but I won't, because this is a short introductory video. So, what's next? Feel free to check out the playlist I've linked here for more videos on calculus. I'll have videos about limits, derivatives, and more that will help you develop an understanding of both differential and integral calculus. And I'll be adding videos regularly, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.